LGBT community sacrificed for the democracy, this democratic battle. It was a very sad result. But also, I think um, the result of the referendum in 2018 let everybody in Taiwan realize that the democracy is very fragile. The pressures against it, including from conservative religious groups, um, the majority of the, the KMT, the opposition party, um, and you know the general public that you know perhaps didn't have enough information and was misled by a lot of disinformation on LGBT rights and issues. I myself in um, the uh, in 2006 also raised a, a marriage. Um, a legalization of LGBT um, marriage uh, act that was a proposal uh, with enough signatures to get it on the agenda, but then it was never discussed because there was so much opposition to it. In terms of the support race, you can see very obvious differences uh, between East and West. And our understanding is because there are a lot of indigenous uh, village in the East part. For those um, indigenous communities, there are a lot of like very complicated understanding about that LGBT community. Their, like, their village probably accept like, um, a more feminine uh, friends, feminine indigenous young kids, but they also say we uh, against marriage equality because the pastor says so. We are at the age era right now, maybe created by the social media or a tech company that where we have this a lot of um, alternative facts. I think it's impossible to know who sent those things first. What we can observe is that there is a lot of a narrative. It's uh, overlap with um, the common disinformation in Western countries against the LGBTI community. So um, they are borrowing those narratives and they know what the strategies can trigger uh, conservative group, uh, can trigger uh, politicians, can trigger uh, parents um, um, to, their, to their fear. The problem with the Central Election Commission is that they don't have vetting power. They have to accept any ridiculous, any ridiculous proposal as long as it meets the threshold. But prior to the 2018 uh, referendum wars, actually there was a, a voice coming from the LGBT group, which I think is, it makes sense, is that if a referendum question is about a minority right, you should not put it on a referendum because you will have tyranny of majority. And what happens if people propose that we take away, away a, a, a indigenous right as in a referendum? There are only 25%, 2.5% of the population are going to lose, right? So there have been a proposal that if the Central Commi Election Commission cannot do the vetting, you should ask the constitutional court to intervene and set a precedent of that I think that's one, one of the better way to go, but, but, but the Central Election Commission did not choose that, and that, that's why you have the 2018 election uh, referendum result. The民主制度, the 
各种不同族群能够平等的生活的一个非常重要的基础。台湾的同性婚姻合法化，它是一个很典型的呃 ，button up 是 grassroots 的运动，因为它并不是率先由任何一个政治精英或是任何一个主流政党所提出，它是先有了社会基础之后，这些社会基础再去吸引政治精英跟主流政党来跟随的。那为什么它会有这个社会基础呢？首先第一个，因为呃，我们台湾的、呃、性别平等教育法里面哈、哦，让所有的中学生都接受到性别平等教育，所以也让大家。的性别观念越来越往平等啊，尊重不同，然后包容差异的这个方向去走。那第二个是在这个大众文化的福马里面，其实大家也越来越看得到，世界上有许多国家已经率先走向同性婚姻合法这个道路之后，因为资讯的流通、资讯的开放，大家发现同性婚姻合法对于社会是会带来正面的效益的。形成了在这个民调上看得出来一股稳定的支持的力量，可能百分之二十到三十到四十的支持的力量之后，主流政党看见了，所以主流政党跟随了。那主要的政治人物，比如说蔡英文总统，在二零一六年的总统竞选里面也提出了这个呃支持婚姻平权的这样的一个政策的承诺